Hello, Giuliano Negri is here. This is our second video from this tutorial. Today, we are going to explain how to create a chassis and how to connect the Meccano wheel to it. I'm going to follow the same procedure as the last video. I'm going to show you the rust jack and walk you through the files. You can find the link in the description. But let's get started, guys. If you don't know what is a Meccano wheel or if you don't know how it works, check out our preview video on the description. I show it all you need to know to model your own Meccano wheels with URDF, like how to give them visual, collision, and inertia properties, and other important steps on the chakra files. Also, I showed what is a DAE file and why it is important. Starting our tutorial, we are going to start in the summitbase.urdf chakra file. Here we have the property, link, visual, and other tags that you already met before. The first important detail in this file is that the first link in the base is the footprint, and this is usually true for all robots to have a ground link. This is pretty standard because usually we do not actuate and we do not set inertia for the first link. It's helpful to use some plugin. To create a chassis, we are going to follow the same procedure as we did with creating the wheels. The only difference here is that we do not simplify the collision with a simple geometry. Instead, we use the same mesh as a visual. But keep in mind that if the meshes are too heavy or too complex, you are going to slow down your simulation. Take a look. There is a new tag over here. The material color dark gray is to show correctly in the RV, RVs. It's to show the correct color. It does not change the gazebo visual, so keep in mind. Now, let's take a look into the robot chakra file. This is where the real magic begins. Look those include tags. We use those to include other chakra or URDF files. Here, we put our code together. In this case, the wheel and the chassis. But also, we could have sensors and much more. There are important parameters here as the offset of the wheels and the names of each wheel. Just remember, each link should have a unique name. Look how there is a macro to create a robot. This is very useful to create more than one robot because we could set the robot's name if you wish so. Look how small all the code is to create four wheels and the chassis and bond it together. Just to keep in mind that the joint definitions are inside the wheel macro, so we are not going to see it over here. Finally, we execute the macro to create a robot. This is a very important step. Do not forget it. You need to define the macro and to use it. The last piece of the code is in the launch file. I'm going to explain what which of those nodes do. The first one runs the chakra creator inside the chakra package, and it, it is responsible to convert the chakra files to URDF in order to gazebo and RVs to interpret it. After, we use the joint state publisher to convert all the joint information in the URDF files to a topic, and it pub publishes their position. Besides, we have the robot state publisher that converts all the joint information from the previous command and link information from the URDF in the transform from the package TF coordinate. This is very important if you want to see your robot in the RVs or if you want to control your robot. 
Finally, there is the URDF spawner, whose function is to spawn the URDF file into the Gazebo simulation. So, right now, I want to launch this file and walk you through all the information stream that is going on inside ROS. But for you to be sure that this is working, let's open and check inside the simulation. So here I just open the gazebo and I'm going to use ROS launch. Okay, so here you can see our model and it's working pretty fine. So the next step is to check our RVs if it's working. So in order to do that we're going to open the graphical tools to check the graphical interface and we're going to open a new shell to run RVs. Oh, I had a minor problem over here. Don't worry. We just need to restart the launch file and it should work pretty fine. Let's check it again. That's right, it's working right now. Okay, so let's make it bigger. Okay, the first thing is to set the right frame that is footprint most of the time it's footprint so let's add our model right now it's here and great we can check out our robot over here so it's pretty good right and if we had some sensors we could also visualize all the data and RVs is pretty useful when we are using most of the time the move base package and other control because we can see all the flows of information over here. But the last thing that I want to show you is the importance of the state publishers. The first one is going to be The robot state publisher let's go back to the graphical interface you can see over here let's visualize the tf tree so take a look over here this is the tf tree and you can see all the transforms from one link to another and you can see that the broadcaster it is the robot state publisher. So that's why we run this node. And the last one, last right was topic list. Over there, was topic, echo, joints. So that's what I want you to see. Take a look over here. You can see that all the joints are in these in this array and you can have their position so this is pretty useful if you want to control those arrays right great so that's it for today guys hopefully we learn how to create the chassis how to bond it with the wheels and now we have a complete simulation of the summit robot in the following videos of this series, we are going to show you how to make this robot move and how to control it using some ROS packages. I hope to see you soon and if you have any suggestions, please put them below. Thank you.